this is the uh, last topic in this series of lectures on the processing of semiconducting materials. In earlier lectures we have uh, find that uh, there are many materials we have discussed particularly the growth of the materials, the bulk crystal growth, the epitaxial kind of crystal growth and then uh, some processing like how the metallization can be done, how the oxide layers, the dielectric layers can be deposited, what materials are used different types of contacts like the ohmic contact, short key contact all such uh, processing uh, technologies we have discussed. Today we shall concentrate our attention on the materials which are used for the photovoltaics which uh, popularly can be regarded as a solar cells or that kind of a device. So, <coughs> you know that uh, there are some appealing characteristics of the uh, solar cell it has low maintenance, long lasting sources of energy, it provides cost effective power supplies for people remote from the main electricity grid and it is non polluting and silent sources of electricity because it has no moving parts and it is convenient and flexible source of small amounts of power not always you have to fed to some grid. You can use as a standalone system on a rooftop or inside your building or a room and it is a renewable and sustainable power as a means to reduce global warming. And in 2008, the global market for photovoltaic panels and equipment was valued at 5 billion dollars which is increasing day by day. So, in a nutshell we can say that the uh, solar photovoltaics is very important device for our, our harnessing solar radiation into electricity. Then so far as the uh, material parts are concerned you can see that different materials are used and in this uh, view graph you can see that uh, a large number of materials which are shown in different colors like say in uh, this color it is the multi junction concentrator cell, then single junction gallium arsenide, crystalline silicon, then thin film technology which can be used using the copper indium gallium selenide cadmium telluride, amorphous silicon, micro nano and polycrystalline materials, then multi junction polycrystalline cell and also some of the emerging photovoltaics materials which are uh, say uh, dye synthesized solar cells or organic solar cells. This is emerging having low uh, efficiency. Now, so far as these materials are concerned, most of the solar cells which are used as in the uh, which are are used in the domestic sector or which are available in commercial market are made of the silicon and p n junction and we know that silicon can be of three types one is a crystalline silicon another is a multi crystalline silicon and third one is a amorphous silicon so three types of silicon can be used for making the solar cells out of which the multi crystalline and amorphous solar cells are basically the thin flame devices, those are the thin flame devices and crystalline silicon it is the bulk solar cell, it is the bulk material and which is widely used and you know that in the present generation it is almost 20 percent efficiency uh, is obtained using this crystalline silicon solar cell which is often uh, used in our, our domestic sector. Now, apart from this silicon you can see from this uh, view graph that there are other types of cells say this one this color um, this maroon color you see that and uh, now the efficiency is 40.7 percent this is uh, uh, the three junction three junction solar cell multi junction solar cell and you can see that it has started its journey in 1990 uh, 1982 and then there was a steep increase in the efficiency on the y axis you can find the efficiency in percentage and now it has attained uh, greater than 40 percent efficiency. This cell is made of uh, uh, three types of materials because three junction are involved and one is that this uh, germanium, this germanium on which there is uh, on germanium there is gallium arsenide p n junction is made and at the top of it the gallium indium phosphide indium gallium phosphide material is used. So, you see that there are three types of junction this is a p n junction of indium gallium phosphide 
this is a p n junction of gallium arsenides and another is the p n junction of germanium. This kind of cell is known as the uh, multi junction or tandem solar cell T A N D M tandem solar cell and this tandem solar cell has enormous efficiency and which is often used in the uh, space application in satellite communication you can find that this kind of uh, solar cells are used which is made by the Boeing Spectrolab or uh, other kind of say in NREL in Varian and so th there are many spire. So, many companies uh, use this kind of uh, technology for manufacturing the cell and which has very high efficiency of 40 percent. Another kind of cell you see that uh, this uh, dotted line, this dotted line is basically the uh, single crystalline and si silicon solar cell. This is the this one the silicon single crystalline silicon solar cell and this silicon solar cell has attained almost 25 percent efficiency. This efficiency is obviously in the lab scale not on the commercial sector and most of the silicon solar cell has been and, uh, designed or fabricated and uh, experimented in the University of South Wales in Australia. Now, other forms of solar cells like the thin film technology, these greens are the thin film areas and the, this is basically the 19.9 percent or around 20 percent is the uh, copper indium gallium selenide solar cell. This is copper indium gallium and then selenide actually diselenide is used CIGS popularly known as CIGS and this cell has achieved that 20 percent efficiency and then this um, uh, yellow dots with green circle this is the cadmium telluride this has almost uh, 17 percent efficiency 16.5 percent efficiency. This is also a uh, thin flame solar cell made of cadmium telluride CDTE. So, we see that uh, apart from this different varieties of silicon like the crystalline silicon, multi crystalline silicon, amorphous silicon, other materials involved for the fabrication of solar cells are the copper indium gallium selenide CIGS, CDT, cadmium telluride for tandem 3 junction we can have compound semiconductor 3 5 compound semiconductor solar cells made of germanium gallium arsenide and indium gallium phosphide. Other than this the emerging photovoltaic cell say it is the disenthesized cells and the organic cells though we can find that the efficiency is very low for organic cell it is almost 5.4 percent or say 6 7 percent the present day people have claimed that 8 percent efficiency has been achieved. And another one is the dye sensitized cells which is uh, uh, make use of the dye for the uh, solar radiation to absorb it has achieved 11 percent efficiency. So, in a nutshell we can see that there are many types of materials which are used at apart from the silicon and those materials are regularly used for the fabrication of the solar cell. Now, the problem is that why different materials we discuss. Here you see that uh, the solar energy spectrum which is available from the sun on the uh, 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 earth surface you see that it contains 46 percent visible wavelength 46 percent visible. So, this corresponds to basically the uh, uh, wavelength say from 400 to 700 nanometer and then 49 percent is near infrared. So, this part is the near infrared which is above 700 nanometer to 2500 nanometer and very small part of UV almost 5 percent uh, reaches the earth's atmosphere. So, the basic thing is that we have to choose materials in such a way that it can absorb the most of the solar radiation which is available on the earth's surface. Now, if we take the example of say silicon we know that silicon is an indirect band gap material having band gap 1.12 electron volt. Now, when we talk about 1.12 electron volt, so it is the difference in energy between the conduction band bottom and valence band top and this energy difference is 1.12 electron volt. This is the E k 
diagram. Okay. So, now this 1.12 means that any solar radiation or any radiation h nu greater than equals to 1.12 electron volt energy. So, any radiation having energy greater than or equals to 1.12 electron volt can be absorbed by the silicon. So, any energy which is less than 1.12 electron volt cannot be absorbed by silicon. Okay. So, another problem is that with this 1.12 electron volt that means, it corresponds to 1.1 micron. So, we see that 1.1 micron or less. So, theoretically, theoretically most of the solar spectrum can be absorbed by the silicon and unfortunately for silicon the absorption coefficient is very, very small within this region of the wavelength which it can absorb. So, consequently though theoretically large portion of the solar energy spectrum can be absorbed by silicon material unfortunately because of its low absorption coefficient the electron hole pair generation on absorption of the solar energy over silicon is very very less. And, and another important aspect of silicon is that one thing is that it has indirect band gap band gap is 1.12 electron volt and it has the absorption coefficient or alpha which is known as the absorption coefficient absorption coefficient it is small absorption coefficient is low it is almost 10 square per centimeter inverse and if we compare with other type of material say a gallium arsenide copper indium gallium selenide or cadmium telluride or in uh, in amorphous uh, silicon we, we shall find that it is greater than 10 square it is almost 10 to the power 4 10 to the power 5 per centimeter square is the alpha value or the absorption coefficient value. So, we can say that uh, there are some um, limitation basic limitation of the uh, silicon is that uh, low absorption coefficient you can see that this is the uh, silicon and uh, crystalline silicon this red one and at around uh, say it is band gap its absorption coefficient is very very low it is 10 square only 10 square. And if we consider with the if you if you compare this value with the amorphous silicon which is the uh, this pink one you see that it is higher absorption coefficient than silicon at this uh, wavelength. Or say if you consider the gallium arsenide or indium phosphide or germanium they have higher absorption coefficient than silicon. And another thing is that it has relatively lower carrier mobility as compared to gallium arsenide and for very high efficiency. So, due to its uh, indirect band gap the thickness of silicon required for absorption of the solar spectrum is greater than 100 micron. So, the wafer thickness employed in practice is almost 250 micron. So, this is wasteful of material and puts a limit on the minimum cost that means, suppose your crystalline silicon wafer is 250 micron or even in some cases it is 250 to 350 and only you are using 100 micron of it you are using 100 micron of it. So, then the rest amount is wastage. So, that is why you cannot reduce the cost of the silicon solar cell and because of this wastage in the crystalline silicon material which you know that can be obtained using the uh, Churalski crystal growth or Bridgman type of crystal growth that we have discussed earlier in this series of lectures. Another thing is that <coughs> direct band gap semiconductor uh, such as gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, cadmium telluride etcetera have the advantage of high optical absorption coefficient in the solar spectrum say 10 to the power 4 per centimeter compared to uh, uh, 10 square per centimeter. So, hence the active layer thickness of 1 micron is sufficient in case of the materials which can be gallium arsenide, indium phosphide or cadmium telluride. Thus, these materials can be used in thin film form leading to the possibility of substantial reduction in cost. So, that is very important thing that uh, if we use the thin film material, if we use the thin film material uh, then the material cost could be, could be very, very less and we know that for gallium arsenide 
indium phosphide, cadmium telluride type of cell or CIGS because its alpha is large, alpha is very large, high alpha. So, we can use small amount of the thickness to absorb the solar radiation and it is almost 1 micron thickness can be used for making this type of a solar cell where, where in case of crystalline silicon we know that this is almost 100 micron. So, this is 100 micron, this is 1 micron for thin film and the reason is that the alpha or the absorption coefficient is very, very high in case of this material which is 10 to the power 4 per centimeter compared with uh, 10 square per centimeter for crystalline silicon. So, the basic idea is that we have to absorb the whole spectrum of, of light because you know that when light falls on the material, if we discuss the uh, physics of the p n junction solar cell, we can see that and when a p n junction is formed, say this is p type silicon on which an n type uh, material is doped, silicon is doped, it is p silicon. And we know that when uh, p n junction is formed, a depletion layer is formed. We, we shall discuss this depletion layer in our earlier lectures also. Like this, there will be diffusion of the charge carriers from one side to another. So, holes which are the majority carriers in the p type silicon, they will move from the p side to the n side, and electrons which are majority carriers in the n type region they can move from the n side to p side region. So, there will be diffusion of charges from one side to another side. Now, when there will be diffusion of charges from one side to another side, what will be there at the region and of the uh, boundary? In the vicinity of the boundary, we will find that this is the metallurgical junction. So, in the very near to the metallurgical junction, we will find that there will be the uncovered charges on both sides of the metallurgical junction. There will be uncovered charges on both sides of the metallurgical junction. So, this uncovered charges they will form and uh, a, a built in potential because the uncovered charges will give rise to an electric field and this electric field will uh, be directed from the n side to the p side that means from positive charge. Uh, ions to the negative ions regions and then this electric field will stop further movement of the uh, charge carriers from the one side to the other side. So, we know that if this is a an p type and this is an n type material. So, if we join, so there will be this kind of this kind of a band structure, this is say the Fermi level will align. So, this is n, this is p and this is the Fermi level throughout the material there will be single Fermi level and then this is the built in potential which is denoted by V b i. So, under such a circumstance the electrons will not be able to move from the uh, n region to the p region not possible without any a kind of application of the bias or the voltage. So, at thermal equilibrium when we are not using any bias or the voltage there will be uh, the built in potential uh, and which will be faced by the charge carriers uh, moving from n region to p region. Now, this is the depletion region and this depletion region actually is that this region and in the depletion region there will be depleted of free carriers. So, there will be almost no carriers in the depletion region. Now, when the solar radiation falls on such kind of a depletion region, when solar radiation will, falls on, uh, will fall on such kind of a depletion region, so what will happen? This is the depletion region you see and electrons and hole pairs will be created. Now, electrons and hole pairs will be created, then the they then the electric field inside the depletion region they will separate it will separate the electrons and holes and the electrons will move towards the left or the n region and the holes will move from 
the towards the right or the p region it is like this say this is the depletion region and electrons and hole pairs are created here. There are a large number of electrons and hole pairs are created. It is created out of the solar radiation falling on the solar cell. So, this is n site and this is p site. So, since there is an electric field in the depletion region, this is the depletion region. So, because of the electric field, we will find that the this will be drifted or the electrons will move towards the n side and the holes will move towards the p side. So, that means, p is already uh, the positive terminal and it has excess number of holes. So, when positive uh, charge will flow throughout towards the p region, so it will be more positive and when electron will flow, flow towards the n region, it will be more negative. So, thereby we will find that two electrodes have developed and if you add a load here, so the it will draw power from the cell. So, this is the concept of the solar uh, cell, it is basically the physics behind the solar cell that the solar radiation will fall on the p n junction, uh, uh, particularly on the depletion region, the electrons and hole pairs will be created and they will be separated. Now, one concept that we must uh, learn here is the minority carrier lifetime. It is the minority carrier lifetime and this minority carrier lifetime is an important parameter in kind in case of the solar cell. This is p region, this region we have discussed earlier that this is p region, this is n region. Now, on the p region, the minority carrier are the electron, minority carrier are the electron and this minority carrier lifetime is that before recombination the electron how long it can travel. So, that is the minority carrier length and or the how much how long time it can be as a minority carrier before recombination. So, that is the minority carrier lifetime. So, depending on the minority carrier lifetime it will travel a minority carrier length that means say L e is the minority carrier length. Similarly, here there will be the minority carrier is the holes. So, L p is the minority carrier length that will move that will move before it the recombination. So, that means, the distance which can be taken into account as L p the minority carrier uh, diffusion length on the n region plus the depletion region w plus the minority carrier diffusion length on the p side that means of the electron. So, this is the region of interest where any kind of electron and hole formation by the radiation solar radiation we can separate the electrons and holes very conveniently. That means, if within the minority carrier diffusion length the electrons and hole pairs are, are formed then the electrons will be first diffused to the depletion region and in the depletion region they will be drifted to the other side where it is the majority carrier. Similarly, the holes which are produced within L p or the minority carrier diffusion length on n side that will be first diffused to the depletion region and at the depletion region they will be depleted uh, they will be drifted to the other side that means, the p side. So, that means, any electrons and holes which are produced within this volume L p plus W plus L e can be conveniently and separated the electrons and holes are separated and they can reach to the proper uh, side to make the uh, voltage or the current drawn out of the solar cell is reasonable or the possible. So, that means, not all the electrons and holes will be a separated or, or 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 all the holes and electrons can be uh, made to drift to the other side it is not possible. Because apart from L e and L p there is the bulk region and in the bulk region you can see that there will be recombination. So, n side or p side which one will be thick or which one will be thin that will be guided by the minority carrier lifetime or the minority carrier diffusion length. 
in case of silicon in case of silicon ale or the minority carrier diffusion length electron on the p side basically it is greater than the minority carrier diffusion length of the hole so that means this ale is greater than lp or ln so that means we can say that the p region will be greater than the n region so so in the general structure of pn junction uh, solar cell we can find that generally a p type material is used very uh, thinly doped very low doped and very heavy doped n plus region is made to uh, uh, diffuse at the uh, top of the p silicon so this is very small region and this is very large region so that we want that the depletion region is formed on the p side because we know that the region where the electron concentration or the hole concentration rather the carrier concentration is low on that region there will be the diffusion uh, there will be the, the extension of the depletion region so here since the doping concentration on the p side is less so the depletion region will be more extended towards the p region so maximum number of electrons and hole pairs created on the p side as well as uh, the minority carrier diffusion length say this is the le so that will be uh, separated the otherwise there will be the recombination of the charge carriers so this is uh, the uh, minority carrier diffusion length very important uh, concept in case of the uh, solar cell and here you see that when i and v is uh, is measured at with respect to some um, load connected to through the uh, p n junction solar cell the dark current is basically the rectifying current without any solar radiation but when there is a solar radiation we can find that there will be an increase in the current and voltage so so this is uh, uh, the uh, solar cell operation in case of uh, any kind of material particularly we have made use of the p n junction here we see that at the top of the uh, cell there is finger electrodes here <coughs> the finger electrodes is very very important because we want that most of the solar radiation is uh, passed can be passed through the surface and made to fall inside the material to generate the electrons and holes however at the same time we need to collect the them that means that we must have some current and voltage obtained from the cell so the finger electrodes is used you cannot uh, cover the whole surface in that case the solar radiation will not be able to uh, pass through the uh, top surface because light will fall through this surface at the same time this cannot be made very very thin because in that case the series resistance will <coughs> increase we know that uh, the series resistance is an important parameter in case of the solar cell and when we shall discuss about the maximum maximum power rectangle we will find that the, the it is a function of the series resistance depending on the series resistance the uh, rectangle will, will move towards the ideal situation now another type of uh, concept which can be uh, made to work is the Schottky junction solar cell here we see that an n type material is taken say silicon and on the top of it a metal is deposited whose work function is greater than that of the uh, semiconductor work function then there will be a depletion region very near to the metal semiconductor junction this depletion region which is shown on the figure and as usual will when solar radiation will fall on the depletion region the electron and hole will be generated and electron will move towards the uh, semiconductor side and hole towards the metal side so when the hole will move towards the metal side the metal will be less positive because uh, there are innumerable electrons on the metal side and when holes moves so electrons will be recombined with this hole so <coughs> it will be uh, moving towards the positive uh, and this will make the uh, 
uh, n type semiconductor as negative. So, we will find two types of uh, electrode one is the positive electrode another is the negative electrode this is the negative electrode and when an external load is connected the current can be flow through the uh, external load. So, that is Schottky junction solar cell the importance of the Schottky junction solar cell is that we can have many types of material where the p n junction formation is not possible because of the uh, non stoichiometry and there will be uh, compensation and you cannot make uh, both type uh, doping possible. And at the same time um, there can be uh, light which is less than the band gap. Generally in p n junction solar cell as we have discussed earlier that the band gap will be greater than equals to the uh, 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 or other way the solar radiation will have the energy greater than equals to the band gap of the material. So, if the material is such that the solar radiation has less energy falling on it compared to its band gap then what will happen that this can be a absorbed on the metal and some of the electrons can be made to cross the barrier. So, though it is a neglected amount we can neglect that thing, but the process will be there some electrons will move from the metal to the depletion through the depletion laser region to the n type. So, uh, making the current larger. Another concept is the uh, P i n solar cell we know that in P i n solar cell what happens that in P n junction we have made the uh, depletion region though large, but uh, in P i n junction we can make this n is region p region between n and p there is undoped this is undoped or intrinsic n region. So, this is undoped or intrinsic n region this is p and n. So, when uh, solar so uh, what will happen that when we join this type of a structure p i n we, when we make this kind of a structure this will be fully depleted region there will be depletion region say starting from here to here. So, completely I region will be fully depleted region. So, we can make use the depletion region uh, large depletion region to uh, separate the electrons and holes which are formed on the uh, material. So, different kind of structure has been evolved uh, uh, slowly uh, to obtain the depletion region or the electric field inside the depletion region more so that it can be possible to separate the electrons and holes which are generated on the depletion region. So, uh, we find that there are different types of structures and if we draw the fourth quadrant the response of this current and voltage we will find that there will be the characterization will look like this. So, this point is known as the open circuit voltage and this will be known as the short circuit current. Okay, so, this is two important parameter of the open circuit voltage and short circuit current and this is the uh, maximum power rectangle that means, one can optimize this rectangle. So, that it can be like this maximum power rectangle. So, this is the maximum voltage that can be drawn from the solar cell and that is the maximum current that can be drawn from the solar cell that means, the load can draw and <coughs> this I m V m by V o c I s c this parameter is known as the field factor. This field factor is uh, denotes that at how this maximum power rectangle is close to the uh, characteristics or the characteristics is close to the maximum power rectangle. So, when both are equal the field factor will be 100 percent almost, but we see that I m V m product will always be less than V o c I s c and so the field factor is always less than and 100 percent in normal cases it can be 70 to 80 percent and to achieve very good kind of uh, characteristics of the solar cell. Another important thing that we, we must discuss is the uh, series resistance effect of series resistance. The series resistance come from this uh, finger electrodes we see 
and uh, there are other possibilities like the uh, doping concentration depending on the metal between the metal and the uh, semiconductor. So, series resistance uh, is very important parameter in case of the solar cell. We see that <coughs> when the series resistance is 0, it is assuming almost rectangular characteristics this blue one, but when there is a series resistance say 5 ohm series resistance is there this blue curve comes down to as to this line that means, it is basically very very small rectangle which can be obtained out of these characteristics. So, as the series resistance increases the maximum power rectangle becomes less. So, that means, the efficiency will be very very less. So, we find that the efficiency is a function of the maximum power rectangle and uh, obviously, this is also a function of the series resistance. So, the idea is that we have to uh, minimize the series resistance by different types of uh, processes which we can adopt. Now, <coughs> with this uh, discussion that uh, silicon this is mostly pertinent to the silicon and what happens when different types of thin free materials we will use. Say in case of this uh, In, ki, in case of say uh, different types of material which we make use, say let us uh, consider first this uh, cadmium uh, telluride. Let us first concentrate our discussion on the cadmium telluride solar cell. And <coughs> here we see that different types can be a uh, different types of structures can be made, we shall show you. It has high absorption, it has high absorption and cadmium telluride is a direct band gap material with high band gap energy of about 1.45 uh, electron volt which is well matched to the solar spectrum and nearly optimal for converting sunlight into electricity using a single junction. And uh, low manufacturing cost why because uh, cadmium telluride solar cells use low cost manufacturing technology to produce low cost cell. Low cost, low cost manufacturing technology means that it is a thin film technology not the bulk crystal growth is involved. However, the problem is with the cadmium telluride is that at uh, tellurium availability on the earth uh, uh, crust is very very less it is 0 0.01 ppm and cadmium is toxic. So, uh, it is very uh, important to consider other types of materials. So, uh, here we can see that the structure is like this let us take a a glass substrate. On the glass substrate the tin oxide is deposited, tin oxide is a transparent conducting oxide and then the P n heterojunction is made. It is important to discuss here that cadmium telluride is P type material, it is a P type material. So, what happens that you have to make use of the heterojunction. So, generally this P cadmium telluride and N cadmium sulphide. So, junction between two dissimilar semiconductor you can see that this P cadmium telluride and N cadmium uh, cellulite cadmium uh, sulphide it is used as a uh, hetero junction between the two material and then there is a back contact. Now, solar radiation falls on th through this glass substrate to obtain the electron hole pair formed on the P cadmium telluride. This cadmium sulphide is basically the uh, uh, window layer here with higher band gap and uh, tin oxide is a transparent conducting oxide. So, when the electron and hole pairs are generated on this emitter P cadmium telluride at the uh, electric field uh, produced at the heterojunction uh, depletion region between two P and N junctions what happens they separate the electrons and hole pairs and we can and um, we will get a uh, photo current which can be drawn using a uh, load. Similar structure can be like this say this is glass substrate now this glass substrate is used as a superstrate. On the glass substrate low resistivity oxide coating and then high resistivity oxide coating is done generally this is tin oxide the first one 
and the second one is the intrinsic zinc oxide. Then the end of CDS window that is the window layer and P dope cadmium telluride absorber. At the back contact there is a gold contact because between two contact two electrodes we shall connect the load. So, different type of structure is used and you can see that it has the flexibility to be grown on the glass. It has the, the flexibility to make use of a particular semiconductor in this case the cadmium telluride emitter and uh, it has the higher absorption coefficient. However, the uh, 14 percent, 15 percent or maximum 17 percent is the efficiency reported for this kind of a solar cell. Here we can make use of the, uh, the flexible substrate also. You can see that this is a flexible substrate and on the flexible substrate that this structure is used. Another um, material can be the copper indium gallium selenide CIGS and it is almost 18.7 percent has been obtained. You can see that 18.7 percent efficiency is obtained. It has advantage, it has some advantages like this. The active layer or the emitter can be deposited in a polycrystalline form directly onto molybdenum coated glass sheets or steel bands. So, this is important that we can make use of the uh, flexible substrate. This uses less energy than growing large crystals which is a necessary step in the manufacture of crystalline silicon solar cells. So, uh, large crystals we cannot use, we were not using. So, uh, less energy is involved. Also unlike silicon uh, crystalline silicon, these substrates can be flexible. So, that is first advantage. Second thing is that one environmental advantage of CIGS solar cell technologies have over cadmium telluride solar cell panels is that it uses a much lower level of cadmium in the form of cadmium sulphide. As earlier we can show you that <coughs> the structure of this CIGS copper indium gallium selenide, it is also a P type material. So, the structure will be P cadmium uh, P CIGS and then N CDS. So, here <coughs> cadmium will be involved as a cadmium in cadmium telluride and cadmium in cadmium sulphide. Here for the basic material that means for the emitter region no cadmium is involved only cadmium is used in the window material CDS. So, less amount of CD uh, cadmium uh, is used. In some design sometimes zinc is used instead of cadmium sulphide altogether. That means, here this copper this in, instead of indium we can use zinc. In case of gallium we can use T or the tin and this selenium we can use sulphur and then selenium. That means, this is selenium and selenium is replaced by sulphur to some amount. <coughs> so, what is the reason for uh, changing this material? The reason is that indium is uh, availability, indium availability is very very small and zinc is largely available. Similarly, gallium is costly and uh, we can use the tin, tin is less costly and in case of selenium we can use this uh, sulphur which is readily available. So, basically uh, so far as the uh, cost is concerned, so far as the also we are we can change in this system in uh, from the cadmium containing material, cadmium is toxic, indium is costly because of the non availability. So, all such things we can move tellurium is also uh, uh, availability is very very less. So, different types of materials we can replace to obtain CGTS that means the copper zinc tin sulphur instead of CIGS or the copper indium gallium selenide. And like cadmium telluride panels CIGS solar cell panels show a better resistance to heat than silicon based solar panels. It has some disadvantage as well like all thin film solar panels. CIGS panels are not as efficient as crystalline silicon solar cells for which the record efficiency lies as 24.7 percent. This 24.7 percent is for silicon. In CIGS it is 18.7 percent. So, so far as the efficiency is concerned you can see that not efficient. 
they are however, the most efficient of the thin film technologies. If you consider that thin film technology like with amorphous silicon or with CDT, they have the highest, because you know that for CDT <coughs> the efficiency is almost uh, uh, 11 point 7 percent and module efficiency, but cell efficiency is 17 point 3 percent. So, if you consider that it is 17 point 3 percent, it is 18 point 7 percent and silicon is 24.7 percent. So, uh, it is not that efficiency like the uh, solar uh, silicon solar cell. So, far being able to produce solar panels at prices that can compete with polycrystalline or cadmium telluride panels has not been possible. There is growing concern by some parties that the cost of fabricating the product makes it difficult to be competitive with current grid prices current grid prices is uh, some say less than a dollar per watt. And <coughs> it may take several more years to solve the manufacturing problems and bring the production cost in line with the other leading producers of solar panels. So, it has some advantage, it has some disadvantage as well. And you see that this is the polycrystalline material which is used. So, you take a substrate say plastic glass or metal foil on which you can deposit molybdenum. On the molybdenum directly the CIGS can be deposited on which this yellow line is basically the CDS cadmium sulphide, because we have discussed earlier that in this case the P type CIGS you see P type CIGS and N type CDS this the junction between the two is the this junction and above CDS there is a transparent conducting oxide which can be tin oxide which can be zinc oxide etcetera on through which the solar radiation enters the material. <coughs> so, this is uh, the structure as shown earlier this is let us take a soda lime glass on which the molybdenum coating is used and then the copper indium gallium selenide CIGS then CDS. So, this is the P n junction in fact, it is a hetero junction then highly resistive zinc oxide and conducting aluminum doped zinc oxide these are very cheap material on inexpensive, inexpensive material. Then the coating is used MgF2 that uh, the uh, anti reflection coating. So, we find that the structure is more or less same here also the same structure this P type material and N type uh, material CDS is used. So, the advantage of this kind of a thin film solar cell is that you can make use of the uh, uh, flexible structures made of glass or some foil metal foil or plastics that is important, but it must be competitive as well. Then another thin film material is the amorphous silicon solar cell, because at the <coughs> beginning we have discussed that uh, there are other materials also, but so far as this P n junction is concerned we can see that so far as this P n junction is concerned the, this is silicon, but silicon can, can be of three types we have discussed earlier. So, let us now concentrate on this amorphous silicon solar cell. We know that in case of amorphous silicon no defined band gap is there only band tail is available and there is a number of surface states or, or <coughs> tail states available inside the uh, material amorphous silicon because of the unsaturated dangling bonds because of its amorphous nature there is no uh, crystalline structure. So, the, uh, no long or short range uh, potential is available in case of the amorphous silicon solar cell amorphous silicon material and its band gap is not 1.12 it is basically greater than 1.12 and the for the for that reason it is very suitable and at that band gap at that uh, uh, and the, the material is basically having very good uh, uh, absorption coefficient. Thin film amorphous silicon solar cells are commonly known as hydrogenated amorphous silicon solar uh, silicon or amorphous silicon hydrogenated. Why it is made? Because to saturate the dangling bonds this is the amorphous silicon and then colon H this means that it is hydrogenated. it is hydrogenated and this hydrogenated uh, means it is uh, the dangling bonds are, are saturated. So, that some of the 
uh, property like the mobility etc can be enhanced some defect states can be controlled. Uh, currently laboratory scale cells achieve conversion efficiencies of 12.5 percent whereas cells manufactured in high volume processes have efficiencies ranging from 6 to 9 percent. Although these efficiencies are significantly lower than those of crystalline silicon solar cells, these thin film cells are lighter, more flexible and less expensive to produce. Amorphous silicon solar cells represented about 3 percent of the 2011 world market. So, that is important that it has gaining its strength, it has gaining its momentum to enter into the world market. <coughs> The efficiency uh, of amorphous silicon solar cell decreases rapidly on its first exposure to sunlight, reaching a relatively steady state after about 1000 hours of illumination. This phenomenon first described in 1977 by Stabler and Wernsky results from the creation of additional dangling bonds that act as recombination center. So, what happens? This is very important uh, phenomena in case of the uh, amorphous silicon solar cell. In case of amorphous silicon solar cell, the problem is the stabler wonsky effect, S T A E B L E R, stabler wonsky W R O N S K I. This stabler wonsky effect is the effect that within the first 1000 hours of illumination, the recombination center increases, additional dangle, dangling bonds increases. So, there is a stable efficiency after 1000 hours of illumination. So, say if it is 12 percent then after 1000 hours the stable efficiency can be say 8 percent, 9 percent. So, that is very important thing that stabler wonsky effect that is the uh, thermal effect, thermally degradation of the amorphous silicon material and within the first 1000 hours of illumination. And current research is focused on improving thin film quality and reducing the stabler wonsky effect by improved manufacturing techniques as well as developing thin flexible waterproof roofs singles. And the benefits of amorphous silicon solar cells include less material because amorphous silicon is a direct band gap material which means that less silicon is needed for amorphous silicon cells. Uh, due to its large uh, uh, coefficient of absorption. Inexpensive substrates, amorphous silicon uh, can be deposited on inexpensive substrates such as glass, stainless steel or even plastic compared to bulk silicon wafers which lowers the cost. So, less material due to direct nature of the band gap and thus the uh, <coughs> higher absorption coefficient, inexpensive substrate and third one is the manufacturing options. Amorphous silicon can be deposited at temperatures below 300 degree centigrade making it a good candidate for flexible substrates and roll to roll manufacturing process. Because if you make use of the polymer or the plastic substrates, higher temperature cannot it cannot withstand higher temperature. So, if you consider the bulk silicon solar cell, the uh, temperature involved is that 1400 al almost greater than 1400 degree centigrade because of the melting point of silicon and in this case it is just 300 degree centigrade and <coughs> uh, manufacturing options are very high roll to roll manufacturing process is possible. Another thing which is uh, obtained and is known as the black silicon, it is a group of researchers from the Fraunhofer Jesselskraft Institute in Germany, they have recently succeeded in doubling solar cell efficiency of black silicon solar cells. Infrared radiation makes up about 25 percent of the solar spectrum and even more than that, black silicon can absorb almost all of this and then turn it into electricity. So, there is quite a bit of potential to improve the efficiency of solar panels by using the black silicon. Now, how it is obtained? It is obtained by irradiating conventional silicon under sulfur atmosphere with a femtosecond laser. And uh, you see that uh, the surface is roughened, installed individual sulfur atoms uh, in the silicon lattice and the material becomes black. So, that is the uh, black silicon, this region is magnified here. So, it is the sulfurization basically, common silicon under sulfur atmosphere with a femtosecond laser. So, advantage is that it can 
it can uh, absorb this. Uh, you see that on the first some slides I have shown you that uh, it can absorb the in infrared. So, some 25 percent infrared it can absorb. So, that means the efficiency can be increased apart from the absorption of the visible region. Now, <coughs> problem with this uh, kind of cell is that though it is uh, made of very low cost material etcetera, but what happens that in say a p n junction silicon solar cell. So, let us consider that high energy light this high energy light say it is band gap is 1.12 electron volt. So, 1.12 or around 1.12 electron volt light it can be absorbed very conveniently, but say around 2 to 3 electron volt or even greater than this energy that will be absorbed at the surface that will be absorbed at the surface high energy radiation and electrons and hole pairs will be created at the surface and they will not be able to uh, be separated or we cannot be able to separate them. And very small energy they cannot penetrate. So, that is the important thing that small energy cannot be absorbed because of the band gap restriction and high energy which are absorbed at the surface or very near to the metal semiconductor junction they will be lost because the electrons and hole pairs will be created there and there will be a large number of surface states. So, that makes this material problematic in the sense that not the whole uh, solar radiation which falls on the material uh, can be harnessed. So, uh, some new structure or some new kind of material one can conceive and uh, in the next part we shall we can discuss this kind of the effect or the materials in details. Thank you.